Today's video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. You know what they say about guys with small hands, right? Small D. Oh, was that too easy? Well, today I'm two-handing a tag team of the latest mice from Glorious. Looking to fill an increasingly crowded hole in the mini mouse segment, will it have solid market penetration or will it come up short? We're gonna go hands-on with the D minus today for both the size and a grip test to see exactly which D you can handle or if you should grab a D at all. You ready? Let's go! Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're taking on the D minus gaming mouse from Glorious PC Gaming Race. You already know what it is. Retailing for $49.99, the D minus is the small but still capable version of the Model D. It's a lot of what we've seen from Glorious already, so we're going to focus primarily on size and shape comparisons and build quality. It's only available in matte black and white, and I would suspect that's due to the glossy models just not being big sellers but I'm guessing here. It's a good size at approximately 120 millimeters long, 61 millimeters at the front flare, 65 at the rear, and 58-ish millimeters at the narrowest point of the grip. 39.8 millimeters high and tips the scales at 63 grams. It falls into the category of Mini Ergo, so there is some competition in there, namely the Death Adder Mini, the Mini Skull, and a couple Mini Symmetrical mice like the Hottie, the Mira, and the Viper Mini. In terms of build quality, the bottom plate has loads of flex, similar to what we saw in the pre-release copy of the mini skull though i understand final copies of that mouse addressed a lot of that i don't actually own a final copy both top and bottom creek is present on my copies side panel creek and flex is pretty apparent easily enough to trigger the side buttons m1 and m2 side play is practically non-existent though and pre and post travel on both was very good Side buttons feel good here as well, with minimal pre-travel and really next to no post-travel. They also lock up very solid on full depress. The scroll wheel hasn't seen any changes here that I can tell. You either love it or hate it, but there's no wobble, no rattle. It feels good. I actually enjoy going back to a glorious scroll after having used some other stuff. I like the height, the tactility, and the spacing in between the ridges. It's easy to depress. It's less noise on both of these mini copies than on my full-size D. It's virtually silent. Thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring today's video. So what does a guy with a giant beard know about shaving? Well, Dollar Shave Club's got you covered for all your grooming needs. Shower, oral care, deodorant, skin care, and of course, shaving. Even now when I'm only shaving like here and like maybe here, the Ultimate Shave Starter Set has this hefty executive handle, two quality blades, plus one ounce tubes of Dr. Carver's prep scrub, shave butter, and post-shave dew. My favorite is the shave butter because I can actually hit these precise lines without trying to guess like when I'm using an old school shave cream. When it comes to skincare, I don't really like talking about it. I don't like going out into the world to shop for it, and I don't like it when it gets too complicated or it takes too long. They make it fast and easy with a hydrating face cleanser that I use in the shower, followed up with a daily face moisturizer with SPF. Super easy, super effective. They've got a ton of other great products too, like ball spray, butt wipes, everything you need to look and feel like me. Did I mention they have beard oil? You can get the Ultimate Shave Starter Set for only $5 and complete your grooming routine by adding any of their other high quality products. After that, the restock box ships full size products at their regular price. Visit dollarshaveclub.com slash badseed to check it out. Thanks again to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring today and thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. So on the whole, the button action is really nice. The switches actually feel really crispy, but the overall like rigidity, the overall strength of the shell itself doesn't exactly inspire a feeling of quality, especially on my black copy of that mouse. The white does fare a little better, but there is still some flex there, which is odd for me at a mouse this weight. The mini skull at 48 grams with that practically non-existent bottom plate, that I could understand, but this weight is on par with like the Death Adder Mini, which is built very well. And even like the Hottie S comes in at just around 50 grams, 
and feels more substantial in the build everywhere except maybe that bottom plate where it's on par. I have to point out too that while both mice are using the updated Glorious Ascendant cable, my black copy came with a flaw at the stress relief that has some of the internal wiring actually coming out of the shielding. This got worse the longer I had it. Obviously, this is something that can be fixed with the cable swap. Glorious does make that very easy, and I'm very certain that their customer service would have taken care of me on this, no problem, as they would you, but this is still obviously going to be pretty upsetting for somebody that spent $50 on their mouse and has to do a cable swap to get a flawless copy. Sensor here is the trusty 3360. The feet here are the G-Skates, and they're still specific to the D-Line. At a glance, they appear to be the same size as the full-size D. This means the ceramic G-Floats for the Model O are still not a fit here. I do love that they've included the protective film in blue now, so it should be super obvious that you need to remove these before use, and they do actually still include the skates that fill that gap between the feet on the bottom. They appear to be the the same size as on the full size D as well. Surprisingly, even with the hand measurement of 20.5 by 10.5 centimeters, the D minus is still a handful. It fills my hand out more than the mini skull and the death adder mini for sure. Versus a full size D, that's decidedly a palm grip mouse, like maybe a hybrid palm claw, whereas the D minus starts at the hybrid palm claw and into a claw for me. Finger tipping the smaller D just didn't feel right on the desk, but it's what I gravitated to naturally during gameplay. The Skull Mini is definitely more fingertip for me. It doesn't feel comfortable really in any other grip, and the DA Mini is fingertip as well, but somehow is still too small and remains one of the most confusing mouse designs I've seen in a minute. I think the DA Mini is a miss, and that's coming from a big fan of the Death Adder lineage. Where the D- sticks out like it's wearing gray sweatpants is in the height of the shell. I normally naturally gravitate back towards a grip that has a little support under these front two knuckles. I don't get that with a lot of the mini mice, regardless of whether they're ergo or symmetrical. Now this is highly personal to hand size and grip style, but the D- and the Mira S deliver that for me with the G Sevlov offerings showing me glimpses of that while the Death Adder Mini and the O-Minus come up short for me in that department. This made things interesting in gameplay though, where I was surprised that my hand actually just couldn't decide between claw and fingertip. It's just a touch low to have my knuckles resting during game, and I naturally went into fingertip mode a lot. The biggest issue for me is that the mouse is still a little large for fingertip, and a little heavy for me versus the Skull Mini, where I can fingertip that all day due to size and weight. This was a surprising turn, but I played consistently better with the Hottie S. So for me, the D-, minus, while it might not be blowing backs out, is definitely still landing headshots. So like we hear in a lot of mice, whether or not this little D is gonna go deep for you comes down to your hand size and your grip style. It's like it's geared more for a medium hand versus a small hand. If your hand is gonna land you trying to fingertip this mouse, I would definitely reach for something lighter, whether it's ergonomic or symmetrical. And yeah, I get that it's only a 15 gram difference, but you can really feel it, especially on those flicks. They feel a lot more effortless with that lighter mouse. If you do have that small to medium hand and you'll land anywhere from a claw to palm and or you've tried the D and it's a little bigger than you can handle, this will be a good fit. I think by now we all know the consistency issues that come with Glorious Mice and their $50 price point. It's evidenced here with the frame having more flex and the cord being flawed on the black copy, whereas the white copy still feels a lot better. They both still do flex on that bottom plate though. From a customer standpoint, if this was my purchase, I would definitely be contacting customer support on that black copy. And I know some people have strong feelings about glorious customer service, but some polls I've run before indicate that most people don't have issues with their mice and the overwhelming majority that do have their issues resolved. So it is what it is. It's a smaller Model D for people with smaller hands. It's not a real exciting release. I know everybody wants to see Glorious do a wireless. I also know that there's a new Pixar sensor in town, one that has low power consumption. So that may be a hint about things to come. Stay tuned for that updated take on the GMMK Ice White, as well as a dedicated review on the Hottie S. I enjoyed my little hiatus, but we're all set up now in the new space, so videos are gonna be coming out at a much faster rate. Again, thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring today's video. Affiliate links are down in the description. Hopefully by the time you see this, the store is stocked and the D- minus is shipping. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up.